Stimulus, stimulus, and stimulus. Where's my stimulus? When will I get my stimulus? How do I check on my stimulus? All questions we get at WFMY News 2 daily. So today we've got experts here to answer your questions. We have Mark Hensley from AARP North Carolina Triad Region, Kevin Robinson from Robinson Tax and Accounting, and Scott Braddock with Scott Braddock Financial. All three are our experts in this subject. So you can text your questions to our experts by 336-379. 5775. Again, this is a text only. Do not call. We do not have people manning the phones to take your questions. This is only a text only question uh, air here and there. Okay, so as we get started, first and foremost, Mark, let's start with where are we on stimulus number three? So stimulus number three was the campaign promise by the new administration. Uh, actually, as part of the inaugural oath, there was a pledge to give each American an additional $1,400. Now it's still being debated. We're in early February, and as recently as just a few hours ago, there was negotiation between the two parties. One party, the Republican Party, wants to see the amount for eligibility be dropped to around $40,000. We know that an individual, 75000 or less, received the first two stimulus proposals. In this one, we still don't know the amount, the eligibility, the income thresholds. That's all being debated in Congress and between the White House and Congress. Okay, so that's stimulus number three in a nutshell. But we're going to answer more questions on stimulus number two and really stimulus number one because that is kind of what's hanging out in the balance as of now. Um, Scott, speaking of which, uh, one of the biggest questions we get is, um, are they going to use my stimulus money to pay off my back pay taxes or my back pay child support? And there's a difference between stimulus one and two. Yeah, there really is a difference there. And it's also a question that I feel a lot as well. So with the first round of stimulus, everyone received a stimulus check that qualified based on the income thresholds, uh, except for those that owed back child support. So even if you had back taxes that you owed, you were still entitled to that first stimulus. Uh, the second stimulus payment, uh, however, uh, is different. And everyone now is entitled, even if you owe back child support, at taxes, you're entitled to the stimulus. And, and just to clarify, because uh, this comes up, we're not talking that you owe child support. That's fine. We're talking about those that are in arrears with child support that would have lost uh, that stimulus to that debt with the first round. But with the second round, everyone is entitled to that as long as they meet those income thresholds. Okay, and then the other question we get, uh, Kevin, we're gonna ask this one to you. Uh, is the stimulus, considered income, am I going to be taxed on it? Well, certainly a very, very valid question, Tanya. I, I get that all the time in my office, but the, the short of the answer is no, the stimulus is not income. It will not uh, increase your income on your tax return. It is actually a credit, which is reflected on the return. It's actually advanced against the recovery rebate credit, which we'll, I'm sure we'll talk more uh, shortly on that. So no, it's not taxable. Uh, basically, it's just an advance payment against the credit a recovery rebate credit on your return. All right, now that we got the normal common three questions out of the way, let's get to your Q&A questions that you are texting in right now. Mark, this person says, if my old bank account is now closed, would my stimulus payment have gone there? How do I get them to see my new account? It's likely the bank sent it back uh, with a closed account. And, and now this is gonna be where everybody's gonna make correction. Millions of Americans did not get their stimulus but they were eligible for one and two or the one or the other. And when they file their taxes, and I know we're gonna talk more about the filing starts next week, this is where those errors are corrected. So one of the ways to track is to get, go to irs.gov and click get my payment. And it may say that a payment was deployed and if it was not received, then obviously it's been sent back to the IRS or the treasury from, from your bank. Okay, so if there was some kind of mix up like that, or if your status says not available, 
then what you're going to need to do is file taxes. And I know that's not what a lot of people want to hear because many people have not filed taxes lately. Um, but uh, Kevin Robinson, let's talk about that. Let's talk about how the IRS is making it simple for folks to find because it is line 30. We want to show it to people while you're talking about it. Yes, that's very important, Tanya. It's probably one of the most important lines on the tax return for 2020 is, is line number 30 is uh, for 1040 and also 1040 SR for seniors who a lot of them don't ha haven't had to file in years, but it's the recovery rebate credit. And as Mark said, there are people for whatever reason may not have gotten, say, the special, the second stimulus payment since it was such a short window of time going out compared to the first one. It started in April and went till about September. So some people maybe didn't get the second stimulus payment. Maybe the bank had to send it back, the account closed. Here is where basically the recovery rebate credit is reconciled against both stimulus payments. So if someone didn't get both or didn't get all that the credit that they're due, then basically it's reconciled and the difference is a refundable credit on line 30 of the 1040. All right, and so the IRS has so many ways for you to file for free. We've got it all in the two wants to know section. They're really making it as easy as possible. And again, you can file for free to get your recovery rebate. Uh, all right, Scott, this person is asking, what does it mean if my stimulus check was less than the $600? Well, it, what it could mean if it was less than the $600 is that your income uh, either as an individual uh, or as a married uh, couple was above that starting income threshold. So take an individual, uh, that's $75,000. So for every $100 that you make above that, they're gonna reduce your payment by $5. Uh, so that, that is a perfect example of why you may have received less than 600 or an odd amount uh, in your check. Mm -hmm. And Mark, um, as we start talking about stimulus number three, the uh, thresholds really come down. They do. Um, the proposal that's being discussed right now is that actually an, an individual with adjusted gross income of $50,000 or more would be ineligible for any stimulus. And that's a big drop from the $75,000. And of course, uh, a married filing jointly was up to 150000 so a lot of questions around, are there gonna be dramatic drops to save the government from sending out so much stimulus? It's important to know, are you eligible? So you wanna make sure when you do file, as Kevin um, has explained very thoroughly, that you look and see, are you eligible based on the criteria of income for the $600 second stimulus, it was based on your 20, it will be based on your 2020 income not 2019. Which I know a lot of people kind of got uh, in trouble with that because they had lost employment in 2020, but the stimulus checks were being based on 2019 when they had a much higher grossing uh, income. And so maybe this will level that out some. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. Uh, we're gonna continue to take your text questions. We'll be right back.